Voidigo is a vibrant action roguelite offering many unlockable features and a delightful visual style. Select your preferred weapon, the Cat Bat or Extend Dog, and set off on an adventure that redefines indie gaming standards. Immerse yourself in this whimsical realm where each run guarantees surprises, elevating the gaming experience to new heights. This is Voidigo. Hello and welcome! I am Steven with Tip Top Web. This channel provides 10 minute video game reviews focused on lightweight games in the genres of indie, RPG, strategy, roguelites, and lights. And this is our first game review, Voidigo. At its core, Voidigo is in the genre of action roguelite, twin stick shooter, and bullet hell. Developed and published by an independent game development studio based in Sweden, Semiwork. Voidigo is a first release and has been in development for six years. Much like other action roguelikes before this, they try to find a way to keep the genre fresh and entertaining through its themes, stories, combat gameplay, characters, and visuals to make it a lasting memory and make gamers come back for more. Voidigo is no exception to this. It pushes some boundaries and is creativity and gameplay features, making you go, oh well that's clever and fun. Let's go over some of these things. From the start, Vertigo seems like you'll jump in some bullet hell action, which it gives you, but how you approach your run and play adds to the game's overall fun. Apart from the loads of power-ups and weapons that alter your experience, other notable features of this game are fantastic, and will keep me coming back to Vertigo. Let's start with the co-op feature. This game has local co-op. I have yet to play it in co-op mode, but seeing that feature right from the get-go is very promising. Vertigo has excellent accessibility features like using a controller or keyboard. And the difficulty, difficulty settings provide an experience tailored for you. So you don't have to have it be an intense action if you just want to focus on the story or exploration. From the start, there are four difficulty options. Calm, Mild, Moderate, and Rogue. I only played on Rogue because I wanted the most action I could ask for. Once you complete a run on Rogue, you can advance to more challenging difficulty levels. In my 10 hours of playing Voidigo, I still need to complete a run on Rogue. That's okay, because I still have to unlock many exciting features in the game and understand how to keep progressing and get good. The game offers a simple concept. Get rid of the void eating up existence around you by exploring the world, finding new weapons and power-ups, and finding new friends who will fight with you. Do this by defeating many wacky bosses you find exploring the procedurally generated world and unlocking new areas in your home base. This game has over 170 weapons and over 150 power-ups. For my 10 hour experience, getting them all will take a lot longer than that. Some fun notable weapons include a turtle with a sword and a gun, a sword holding a sword, and an axe holding an axe. The creative weapon design is a highlight of Vertigo. They always kept me laughing and curious to see how the following weapons I get operate in silly ways. There are both melee and ranged weapons, which keeps the combat fresh. And each melee weapon has a built-in combo system to help you swing the thing. Along with the combat system, you can execute a jump dodge, which allows you to avoid bullets and stomp on the enemy's heads, and connect that stomp to another enemy, pulling off a head stomp combo. The headstop combo can go infinitely if there are enemies to stomp on. Mastering the combat mechanics and knowing your weapon, dodge jumping, and sprinting are essential to progressing further into the world. Powering up your character and defeating the bosses you must hunt down. Hunting down bosses is another fun gameplay mechanic that makes this game original. Each level is divided into small sections with random enemies and power-ups. You must find the beacons to summon the big boss to save your home base and expand it. While the boss is summoned on the level, they can move from section to section, run away from you, or chase you down. It's cool to see how the boss can interact with the level, destroy barriers, and create new entrances to another section. An entertaining gameplay feature that makes this game unique. The boss designs are also out of this world. From giant ant that tunnels through the ground, to a hybrid chicken lobster snail that shoots bullets in unpredictable patterns. I 
like to mention a couple small features that really set Voidigo apart. The ability to choose a color scheme for your run. It's a minor detail that I think most games can adapt that allows for good accessibility and fun customization. The other appealing gameplay feature is completing story progression and unlocking sections in your home base. It is done by finishing off bosses, plain and simple. Not completing a run, not by doing a bunch of fetch quests, just hunting down those bosses and killing them. Kind of like a Souls-like game. I love this. It keeps the objective simple and rewarding when it's done. All the exploration, power-ups, weapons, and creative enemies are a beautiful cherry on top of this delicious ice cream sundae. This channel will focus on lightweight games that are easy on my computer, so reviews will most likely be done for games in pixel art or 16 slash 32 bit graphics. That being said, Voidigo is in the style of pixel graphics, but it doesn't hold back when it comes to detailed animations and some out of this world character and boss design. Realizing that your turtle weapon is losing its mind while wielding a gun and a knife or giving your cat back some snuggles between battles is a detail that makes me smile. The whole world design is abstract and ambiguous, but it works well and makes the experience enjoyable. The colors are vibrant and neon, with the primary color being pink, which screams fun and creativity. However, there are times when the screen can be cluttered with many objects moving around. A style choice that worked well with the gameplay is providing a red outline for anything that can hurt you, including bullets, enemy area of effect attacks or falling objects around you. It's clear and noticeable, making your plan of attack and the overall combat gameplay an admirable feast for the senses. Voidigo has some high quality sound and music that blends seamlessly with the gameplay. While playing, I wasn't focused on the sound and music as nothing really stood out, which could be good. The sound and music definitely fit well with the world that is presented here. It's clean and responsive, and it just works. Some little audio details that keep this game intriguing, like the narrator giving you cryptic storyline development, your weapons making noises, uh, you know, because they can. And there are a couple of music tracks that, you know, got me grooving, like when you face off with the pirate boss. Overall, Voidigo is a very smooth and enjoyable experience. There are no loading issues, it's easy to navigate the menu, the whole home base system in the game takes a little bit of time to understand, but once it sinks in, the entire game loop becomes an adventure. The game is only 1GB in file size and requires at least a GeForce GT 425M graphics card. And my computer had no problem running it. There was one technical issue I had. Uh, during my second load of the game, my controller seemed to stop working and I was forced to use mouse and keyboard, which is not ideal for me when playing a twin stick shooter. Then there was an update on my next load up of the game and suddenly my controller was working again. It's great to see the game being updated even after its 1.0 launch. At its core, Vortigo is an action roguelite, which means each time you head out for an adventure in the world, different enemies, bosses, power-ups, weapons, and level designs will be waiting for you. That's common with most action roguelites out there. Being a roguelite isn't the only thing that makes me return to Voidigo. The challenging combat system, entertaining weapons, and many unlockable areas and features make me want to go for another run. In my 10 hours of playing Voidigo, I still need to complete the game. I only got around maybe 25% done of what there is to unlock thus making around 40 to 50 hours of content to complete. Starting a new game from scratch won't be the same experience as before because of the procedurally generated content.
Voidigo is a fun, vibrant, abstract, twin stick shooter action roguelike. It has loads of content and features to keep players returning for more. Its outstanding creativity, fun little quirks, and neat comeback system sets this apart from other action roguelikes. Although not a perfect game, with its minor technical issues and sometimes visual overstimulation, I highly recommend this game. If you're a new player into action roguelites or an action roguelike veteran, this game packs a big punch and made a spark on the indie game scene. It's only $20 USD on Steam, which is absolutely worth it. If you can get it on sale, amazing, even better. Absolutely pick up this gem. I will be looking for more from the developer Semiwork, as Voidigo is their first release. I'm very excited to see what else they come out with. If it's an improvement on Voidigo, it will be a banger, much like Voidigo has already proven. I give this game 9 top hats out of 10, which is our rating system here. Thanks for watching guys, welcome to the channel. This is the first video in very excited times for Tip Top Web. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Would love to know your thoughts on Voidigo. Also, what other games should be reviewed on Tip Top Web? I would love to hear from you. I have more reviews and gameplay in the works, so stay tuned. Also, I stream on Twitch and Kick on Mondays and Tuesdays. Use the links in the description to find me there. Thanks everybody, see you next time.